Kia ora everyone, we my head is awesome, I'm Nick. I'm Dead, and today we're doing the final episode of our DIY cosplay series at home. This is about accessories, getting that final look, using your imagination. And it sounds like fun, let's do it! Let's do it! So we, we just go into op shops or thrift shops or junk shops or second hand shops or anything. Or and yard sales or anything that's cheap you can get your hands on. And you just go with your open mind and imagination. Like this sort of thing, you know, just an obvious, just a cheap old dust mask. But you can you can build on this or paint it or it, it, it allows you to breathe too while you're wearing stuff over your face. You can even add something like this, which adds a little gauge, a little something. These are just from a um, thrift store. It's that steampunk mechanically look. Exactly. And you can, look, you can add to them. So this is just a clear plastic tube and I've poked a bit of wire down the middle, which you can't see, but it allows you to shape it. So you can stick them on. Or, this is a bit of cable, well I don't know what it is, cable something, but it's just cheap old plastic, stick them on, I painted it up, rusted it. Do you um, like that steampunk post-apocalyptic look? Yep, tubes, tubes are great for that post thing. And I've just got just a pile of junk here, so I've got an old watch. Like it. This is stuff that we didn't end up using, but we thought we could. I've got just some money. And it's sort of detailing, you know? Some guns that look just cheap and plasticky now, but with some additions and some paint jobs that gives you what you need to have. Okay. I've got spare shoelaces, spare bandages, some sandpaper. This is all just stuff that you can pick up from anywhere, but can just really add to that look. Yep, I've got a, um, a wrist guard for a skateboard. It's got that, it's got that look, hasn't it? That it SWAT sort of look. You know, you, you paint them up, do them up, so whatever you find that you think, ah, I'll pop that in a box for later, bring it out for your costume. What's that? Uh, that's a little buckle that you found. Oh, it's a belt buckle? Yeah, but it could be used for anything. Just things that spark your imagination. You think, mm. maybe. Could be yeah, exactly. cool. I just got a cheap, cheap old pair of boots that had the look I was looking for. Stick a bit of foam with a few screws on it. You got a more heavy steel hobnail looking look. To give them a boot if you wanted a boot because boots are too dear. Um, what I found was a, a, a uh, woman's boots, actually, dare I say it, that had that look because they had the buckles on it for me. Cut the shoe off and you just slip your shoe into that, right? And that becomes a boot cover and suddenly you have that appearance of the boot. And then if you don't want the seam look, you can get another one of these, stick it over the top. Yep. So you have yourself a cover, you got extra bits, but it looks like one seamless boot. Yep. Speaking of boots, I found an old pair of cowboy boots, which yeah. were <laughs> yeah, which are pretty worse for wear, but that's perfect for what I'm about. In fact, they are shredding on the table. Um, so what we did is they were all peeling, all roughed up. So we just made that a little bit worse, roughed it up everywhere that we could find. Um, in fact, it doesn't even have a sole on it. And then we just went hard with the paint and used the paint to give this the real look. So we like washed it out with some lighter colours and then messed it up with some darker colours. And it doesn't have to be super extravagant, it's subtle, it's just to give you that look. All our stuff we did, we wanted that dusty look. So we used a light coloured paint, just a cream colour, on the bottom of anything that was long and just uh, blended it out. And then we also used the black and the brown and made everything do. You can see actually the, the top I'm wearing is what I wore underneath. And we're wearing that thing, so there's rust in that happening. So basically it's just brown spray paint all over me and then a bit of bit of light to make it look dusty, right? And always with paint, if you don't get it right the first time, just go over it again until yeah. you figure it out. Yeah, it's not tough, is it? Huh. Or while it's still wet, wash it off and you get that get that dirty old look again, right? Exactly. While we're down with the feet and shin sort of area, um, I found these the other day, they're just a cheap old pair of cricket, kids cricket um, uh, leg guards. What couldn't you make with that? What couldn't you make? They right. have that real heavy look. Bizarre. The other thing you can find is shin guards. This would be for field hockey or soccer, something like that. I can't show you the shin guard I used for the post apocalyptic because I recycled it into a uh, shredder. I used the shin guards because I knew there's going to be a lot of pressure on the phone, might not be able to handle it. Just to give it another texture, I used this uh, rough stuff here, which is it's just rubbery stuff that you mat that you put in the bottom of a drawer to stop all your stuff falling over. It's the stuff that we used under the handle for our axe in the weapon making video. Ah. Of course. And then just a few bolts on it, everything cut, and gave her, because it's shredder, I gave it a much lighter, more silvery look to it. 
just tied a rag around the top because he was a ninja of course uh, just to cover that seam. Pretty simple but strong as well. It's got to be durable, it's got to be wearable. That's the most important thing. It has yeah. to have the look but you have to be able to wear it as well. So my costume had a bit more of a, a fun, young, wild feel. So I went with knee pads which gave me sort of a knobbly knee weird looking look. But basically we just got a regular knee pad, sprayed it all over, gave it that metal look and that just gave me a very different league look. Not exactly elegant, but a little more post-apocalyptic. -y. Instead of wearing fingerless gloves, just wrapped rags around, right? It's um, not that I'm doing it that neat, but more real to me, and it wasn't hard to do. Just tuck them in, you don't have to fix them on or anything. For a different look, I did the same thing, but with bandages. Gave me a bit of a uh, crazier ex-hospital person look. And also you covered your face too with, with the bandages yeah. there. And I covered my legs with the bandages. Basically any space that was open on my body I had the bandages on. Gave me sort of more of a crazy look. And you can see we've spray painted them lightly in a patchy of um, brown and black. And little bits of red. Yep, um, just to give it that dirty look. There's no point. No, if you've got clean bandages, nah, they ain't going to look that way, right? But we, you see we didn't cover it in fake blood or anything, we're trying to be subtle, we're giving the idea of something, we're not telling you what's happening, it's the idea that I may have been wearing bandages because I've been cut up, not, hey here's my gashes and I'm covered everything in blood. And just on that, old blood can be a hard colour um, to work out, so the hint of it, let the viewer see what they want to see. There's another type of shin guard as well, which uh, velcroed on. Um, but I found them great for the forearms. Uh, they give a support, so you can put your phone on top and it gives a support and makes them strong. Um, whereas sometimes the phone just wrapping itself uh, can be a bit soft, you know? Um, so this sort of type and built over the top. So um, you can see that they are basically the same thing. This is just foamed on it with the domes. And I've stuck rope on. Uh, this is meant to be a quiver. That ties to my arm. Um, found some old arrows, cut the backs off them. Uh, my mistake, I think, was to paint them black. Should have left them coloured, I think. It would have been, it would have stood out more. So there was this thing, which is basically one of those. It's got a vinyl on it. The, you go to a uh, car upholsterer or anyone like that, a motor trimmer, they've got boxes full of their offcuts. Yeah, just go in there, there you get them for nothing. Um, and then just there was an old coat and had a bit of felt in it, cut it on there, punched some holes in it, laced it on with a shoelace or a bit of rope, can't remember now, and that gives you just something to work, you know, just covers a gap, right? Another subtle base look. This thing here, it was just to give it a metallic look, so this is entirely foam, but you can see there's no weight on it, so it didn't need to be any stronger or anything. And this gives it more of a robotic look. It's got yep. that robot skeleton sort of look yes. to it. Yes. That's so simple. Yep. Um, made up a shackle. So this is just foam. Um, cut deep here to create a, a, a sharp point. Um, and a bit of plastic chain on the end. So that was just a fill in space. Actually, I think I wore it on that side. I can't remember that. It was just to give something to fill in. Fill in. So. And also, it gives another idea to what our story might be. True. For my right arm, I just cut a coat out. Um, made some laces out of the coat material and just made a sleeve really for the side. This stuff here is, oh, it's just from the, spend your life in the building materials warehouses, you know, that's just got everything. So this is like a bit of tubing for a shower, um, it was cheap. I've run a bit of wire through the middle so that I can shape it. So I made up my knives by finding some carbon forks, hammered them flat, Found an old belt that had the look I wanted and made the scabbard uh, out of that. Tied a bit of vinyl, a bit of rope around to make it a rough looking handle. Um, you can see I've stuck a piece of Velcro here, which matches Velcro on my arm thingy. Sometimes it's good to just get a friend to help you <laughs> when you don't remember how you cost you. And I made two of them because I wanted to look dangerous. So they tucked under there. So I had a um, quiver on one side and the knives on that side. Um, rough and ready but that's what we wanted to look like. So a big part of my costume was my belt. So the basic of it was Dad found this old school early 2000s sarong thing that used to tie around the side like a big 
floaty belt very well. But basically what I did is I hooked it around, tied it up real loosely with string just to give me this little skull scabbard. So my skulls keep falling out because I've, I've kept it in a drawer for a little while. But basically, so I had my skulls there and I just well, I want it to look like a junk rat. So I've got all sorts of stuff. Got these old syringes, filled them up with different colored paints, dirtied them up, tied them on with a little bit of leather. Got these tiny little, what you call these, serving forks? Cocktail forks. Cocktail forks. Um, so they're, they're just in there, just another sharp. sharp little thing that I thought my character might be like, hey, I could maybe use that to stab somebody. Just got a couple of feathers, because feathers are always cool. Got a little whistle. Basically anything I could find that I thought might have that look to it, I want it to look like I'd just been walking through the wasteland and I found this, oh this is cool, this is cool, this is cool, and just put it on my, put it on my little yeah. For this sort of, thing. For this sort of costume, you can't beat organic material. Feathers, rope, mm -hmm. leather. Mm -hmm. And um, they're an ample supply at any old shop, right? Exactly. When it came to masks, I know we've already done it in part two, um, but just to run over for you again, um, sunglasses, masks. So, simple, easy. Including the one we made. Right. Made that in about two seconds, right? Yeah. And the other type, which is the sling for your ears, um, which is what we wore on the day. Yeah. Mmm, smells like con. Mmm. So we chose face coverings to go with our narrative of post-apocalyptic wasteland, like it might not be safe to breathe. But you can do anything with your face, we just find masks are easier, you don't have to make expressions, you don't have to put anything on your face, it's covered, it's done. Yeah, and it worked well for it us. It worked well. It sort of, there's something about, you can't see the eyes and the anonymity of it. It, it. People had to look and see, you know, it gave it that creepy look as well, I thought. And they also look crazy. Crazy, crazy people. Crazy people, or just a little bit unbalanced. It's, it just adds to your costume, you know? That's why people love the Joker. Yeah, true. So guys, we're just going to move on to weapons. Um, I know we did cover this in part three, but we're just going to go over it again. So just to show you just how it's simple it is, we went to a cocktail party that was for superheroes. So it was an understated dress-up. And one of the, in about two seconds, I mocked up, mocked up this um, Thor's hammer, so it was a cane, right? And it just had to have that Thor look. Um, this is a block of wood, to shave the edges off it to give it a look and then paint it and stuck it on a piece of dowling, wrapped a bit of vinyl around to just make the difference. You might not look at this and think Thor, but with other subtle elements, you build a Thor, you don't scream Thor, it's subtle. So guys, as you've already seen, this was just a handle of an old dead line trimmer. Um, I basically wrapped it up with rope with the um, knotless knots that we've seen. As seen on our last video. Absolutely. Um, and then covered up shoe nugget, um, which gets into the cracks and makes it a little dirty without taking from the rope block. For anyone who doesn't know, shoe nugget is like shoe polish. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> um, all the bits that I couldn't cover, I covered in uh, dirty old bandages. And this is purely just foam um, cutout of a uh, saw blade. And it's just I just bolted it through, and the bolts are good, makes them look ugly. Polystyrene ball on the end to give it a bit of counterbalance, and because this is a real thing, it has a bit of weight to it. It's not just a foam thing, you know. Um, that was kind of cool. Um, because I had the quiver, what I made was a crossbow. So this is the children's gun and a children's um, little bow. And it's even got a little guy in the middle with a smiley face and a... Little bumblebee man. Is that what he is? Yeah. Um, we covered it in rope and dirt and feathers. Um, even the string was a bit of dirty old rope. Vinyl for the handle. Gives it that... Just that mismatched, I've built it look. It's just got a look. And this, of course, is the uh, scissor axe we made in part three. Um, now, my person that I created was a little bit more... Uh, juvenile and junk ready so my tools weren't as um, deadly as say the warrior dad was so I had a rope tied to my belt which gave me that very Indiana Jones look I also had a set of tongs so basically what I did is I put a bit of duct tape around I bent them all up and mangled them up and spray painted them up and my thought was my person might have found these thought they were a cool weapon even though they're definitely not a weapon and just stuck them in his belt 
they look dumb on their own, but in that costume, they work really well. They gave it that real eccentric, like crazy. knick-knacky, crazy look. Yeah. yeah. This one we built for my sister, who came over very short notice. We had to put it together very quickly. So very luckily, we live by a beach, so we were able to get a big piece of driftwood. Just picked it up off the beach. Strung a bit of vinyl around there, stuck those feathers on, a bit of rope. Gives it that look, gives it uh, actually a very different look for the whole costume. We gave her the priesty look, so we ended up putting a cross on her forehead. Um, and you could hang things like a dream catcher or something off yeah. that to make it, give it that, give it that esoteric that sort of look. Okay? Wisdom, a shaman look. Yep. The, yeah. Yep. And we had to bang up something really quick, so basically we just took some knee pads and made a shoulder guard. Um, did her hair differently, got her wearing robes. You know, we'd sprayed them up and made them dirty, but she became the shaman of the group, really, yes. eh? So maybe on her own, it would, it would have been a almost lackluster costume, but with us, it added a whole new aspect to her costume. She was part of a group. Mm, absolutely, with the, uh, the, it was a group costume, absolutely. Group right. costumes are great because you don't have to have everything perfect. You add to each other's costumes by being in the area with each other. Yep. My person, because they were also maybe not so strong, uh, carried a shield. So this was a bamboo fruit bowl, uh, it was bright pink. Um, and Dad helped me spray it up, gouge it up, stick the rivets on, we got some bolt heads in there. And then he found an old belt, so we bolted that onto the back. And basically this was just strung onto my back. Um, but it gives, it's another, again, a real look to it. Yep. It's got a real look. The belt itself, the, look we've used a hundred different belts in doing these. They give a look, you just find the right one and it'll, it'll just add. It's the attention to detail. It just adds, you know? The thrift shop is your friend. So I've got a couple of extra bits here that added to my outfit. One was this pair of goggles. These were actually a gift. So these weren't from the, the cheap, cheap section, but you can get just cheap looking goggles. These have got gears and stuff on the side, but you can just slap things on there just to give these round goggles, give it that look, that real crazy look. Certainly post-apocalyptic, yeah, that yes. Mad Maxi type style. Yes, so you can use, as Dad showed before, any sort of goggles, snow goggles, anything like that, but I find these round ones give it that scientific, crazy, mad hat a look. I also made this necklace, which just, I wanted to put a bunch of junk on, so it was like my person had found what they found precious in the world. So I've got a bullet casing on there. Like can tabs, are they? Can tabs, yep, so I got a bunch of can tabs that I saved from drinking cans, I suppose. Um, some little skulls that I found off a um, cheap bracelet in the dollar shop and it's just a bit of old um, uh, woven together leather I suppose and then I just tied that round and that just gave it another level of look, another subtle aspect that gave voice to my character. Again, just the attention to detail, eh? Just mm -hmm. the detail that, that brings it out. So for the body of my costume I wanted to go for a leather jacket look. So I had an old leather jacket like this, which isn't real leather, and they're a dime a dozen because when they go, they go. They just start flaking off in all sorts of places, which is perfect for us. It's perfect. So, I got one of those. I chopped the arms off. I really distressed it all the way around. I cut chunks out of it. I really uh, exaggerated all the holes that were forming. And then I got a shoulder guard on there. So I wanted sort of a cap sleeve, which took a lot of humming and hiring to get right. But in the end, we went with like a very subtle sort of cap. And then these spikes, which gave it that real uh, native sort of look. And I got my friend Jerry up here, which was a polystyrene foam skull from a craft shop. So you can pick up all sorts of like foam shapes, like that ball on the end of the line trimmer, all sorts of shapes. Um, and then I just mix a spray paint and hand painted him up, um, different sides to give him that sort of weathered look and then that was my body. And actually I can see we've painted this up, uh, made it dirty mm -hmm. by giving it the old brown paint. Spray painted everything. And brown and white paint. I just wanted to cap off my look. Um, so I found the old uh, bowler hat, grabbed a couple of skanky old feathers, stuck them in there and found another belt, would you believe, that just sort of suited me. Sprayed it all up, dirty. Um, I think I look kind of cool. Yeah. My head is awesome. So the basis of my outfit was this coat. Give me that uh, soldier's look I was hoping. Um, it is a woman's coat because they're a dime a dozen and they're everywhere. Um, cut the sleeves off. To give it a tattered look, I basically just strung a couple of bits of string around. It was uh, tempting for me to want to rip it to bits, but I thought, no, 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 you're going to make it look awful. 
just uh, more subtle perhaps. So as you can see, or hopefully you can see, the bottom of it we've painted dirty, so it's like it's been dragging in the dust, and then that blends as we get um, as it gets higher up. So I was looking for armour, and uh, on one side I thought our uh, chains might give it that look as well as give it that skunky sort of look. Uh, so this is just plastic chain, and then I've just milked it like I'd be milk a cow to give it the, the all the different colours. What a gross analogy. <laughs> Put screws through the shoulder of the jacket um, and then I just slip the chains over the top. Um, also because I had a few arrows lying around, I just cut the heads off some broken ones and put them on top so that they would you know, hopefully give that steely, dangerous look. My idea was to build a cap with just a piece of steel on this side. When I put it down, it looked pretty plain and boring and ordinary. So then I ended up sticking these um, bands on. And you can see rivet heads everywhere. Everywhere steel comes together, there's something that's got to fix it. So your rivet heads. And that's given it a cap. Put a couple of bolts through the top. Um, I tried to make chain mail out of, uh, these are what I would call key ring circles. Um, but I don't know how to make chain mail. It's just a shambles and cost me hours of my life. So I've just left them hanging there. Which works quite well because when I, it gives that impression and it makes a sound when I walk. So you must remember you've got to wear these things. So I've stuck the arrowheads on, bit of foam under the bolts on this side, right? So that they're not digging into my skin. Same on this side. It's just, you want it to be comfortable. You don't want to get home and have big holes in your skin. So there you go, guys. There's all the tools you need just to make great cosplay when you've got no room, no money, and not much time either. Just go have fun with it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have an awesome day. See ya. Bye.